to use an array in code.org, you just go to the variables box in the toolbar and scroll down to these two that say list. So first I'm going to grab this one with the quotation marks. If your uh, list of information is going to be words, that's the one that you want with quotation marks. If you're going to be dealing with data or numbers, you want to grab this one right here. Uh, that does not have quotation marks. But for now we'll just do this one and I'm going to start with a list of colors. I'll just call it color. And then you have square brackets and then each color has quotation marks around it with a comma after it. That's sort of the syntax. So we'll just do red, blue, green, and then if you want to add more you can hit this right arrow and put your quotation marks around or you can just show text and keep typing. Just make sure that you put a comma between each one. Orange and gray. That's enough. And now to use to use this array, um, let's grab some design elements. So maybe just a button. And we'll start it with some color we didn't choose. Bright yellow, and uh, we need to make the text larger. And easier to read. There we go. And uh, we'll call it change underscore btn for the ID. It's the change button. And we'll make it say change. Okay. So now let's use this code. We're going to say um, whenever the button is clicked. So on event change button click. Whenever the change button is clicked, we want to set a property. So I'll scroll down, it's near the bottom. And we're going to set, we could set the property of the screen or of the text, but since the button is large and bright, we'll just change the property of the button. And we want to change its background color. And now by default it says red. Let's just run that and see what happens. So when I click this button, it changes to red. So I know my code is working, but it's not doing what I want it to do, which is to pick an item from this list. So um, let's go with uh, red, since we just, well, we need it to be different than what we just did. Let's pick blue here. Uh, notice blue is in the second spot on our list. So to indicate that one, first we have to backspace out the color given, backspace out the quotation marks, which is a little bit difficult in code.org. And we're going to write here, we're going to write the name of the list, color, and then square brackets. And then in square brackets, we need to put the number of the location of the color that we want. So even though red is the first one in the list and blue is the second one, we actually count inside of a list or an array uh, by starting with zero. So color square brackets zero would be the red position and color square brackets one would be the blue position. So let's put a one here, color square bracket one. And now let's run it. When we click, it changes the button to blue. So just to make sure they're all working, let's go all the way to the end. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. If we do color square bracket five, that should make the button turn gray when we click it. Okay, so that's working. Now the next thing you can do that's kind of fun is to randomly choose one of those. So let's make another variable, and this time we're just going to use the old-fashioned normal one. And we won't even, well, we can create it up here. That'll be fine. But we're going to call this one random index. And we don't actually have to set it to a value, so I will switch to text mode and just create it like that. So there's something called random index. It's not yet been used. Now, whenever the button is clicked, we want random index to get a new value. And we want that to be a random number. So we'll go here to math and grab random number. And let's see, there are one, two, three, four, five, six. So it seems like it should be a random number between one and six. But since we start at zero, we should do a random number from zero to five. 
Okay, so every time it's clicked, it's going to make random index into a random number between 0 and 5. Let's just see if that's working. I'll add a watcher on random index to make sure it's working. And run. And you can see that random index is changing its value over here between 0 and 5. Okay, the only thing we haven't done is it's gray every time because we haven't used that value yet. So right here, we're going to say set the button's background color to color square brackets. And instead of picking a position, we're just going to put that variable random index right there. And so now it's going to it's going to take this random number that it creates and, and make the background of the button go to that random position in the array. Let's try it out. So the random index here first is 4, so that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's where it got orange. When we hit it again, now we're at purple, which is a random index of 3. 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so it looks like it's working. And the only thing you might run into here that's a problem is, uh, say I added another color. Uh, what's a color I haven't used yet? Pink. Put quotation marks around that one. Well, now my random number doesn't work anymore. It's never going to select pink because it's only going to 5. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It'll never go past gray. So you could change this number as well. Um, but then if you added another color later, you'd have to change this number again. So one, one workaround uh, that's kind of best practice is to, instead of giving it a maximum number, uh, to just say the maximum number is color.length minus 1. And I'll explain why in a second. So the length of this is how many items there are. Right, the length of this array or this list. So it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Currently has seven. So color dot length equals seven. And I think I can show that here. Um, mm. Let's try this again. Okay, color dot length is seven because there are seven items in the list. But a random position of seven would be one past pink since it starts at zero. So so color.length minus one is actually the length of the array. And so now let's see if we ever get pink. Yeah, so now it's picking up pink. And if we added another color here, what's something we haven't done yet? Um, we haven't done, I don't really like to do white, but we'll do it, ooh, let's do silver. Is that the silver position? Random index of 7, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It looks a lot like gray, but that is actually silver, so it's working, and we never have to adjust this. We only have to add things to our array.